So my name is Utkarsh Madan and I am currently pursuing a BLB 5 years course from Sim versus Law School in Lakhpur. Uh, I started preparing for CLAT back in 2018 and then I took a drop for a year. And then finally I took my admissions in 2019 and Sim versus Law School in Lakhpur. Okay. So that's pretty much about myself. Okay, uh, so you said like you took a drop here right in the middle after you completed it. Yes, yes. Why did you like, is it for CLAT like every other student does? Uh, actually, I uh, I had no plans of uh, pursuing law before my 12th. So I had no idea what I had to do after 12th and I was least interested in studies. I thought I want to get into some business or something. But then again, after my 12th, was completed within two or three months i decided that i want to pursue my further studies in the field of law then thereafter i thought that uh, i should when i have already dropped any year i should definitely go for plat and maybe try my luck on getting some good college so therefore i then it was then i started preparing for plat i took admission in some coaching classes okay in my city and after that I in the year 2019 I appeared for various exams including CLAT, SLAT and other few exams. So you know like how have it like you know you have you started preparing for CLAT you know and then you didn't went to any NLUs so like have it like you know uh, made some problem like you right now you're in fifth year like oh, you know that an, an NLU wall attack did it affect it? So as of now, what I have been able to observe to the ones who want to get into corporate life, yeah. it does affect somehow because the placement scale that you get in top five NLU, say the tag per se of NLU does not matter. If you yeah. are into top five NLUs, I'll say the placements over there are really good. But uh, if you are in the other NLUs, it is similar to the other eminent law colleges which are you know other private colleges and some other good colleges as well for example if i say the uh and the Prasad law and job university is doing good however the only problem over there is placements and uh, the NLUs which are not in top five i don't think they they do provide some kind of placements but if you want to say the tag which we carry in our mind is of those five top NLUs and not the other ones. I'll say NLU, Bangalore, say yeah. Delhi and a few more. So like uh, you're saying like only the top five NLU, you know, the tag is fine. But if the other NLUs are like, you know, it's basic, it's very normal because I feel like we all are, you know, equal as a law student sorry. because, uh, okay, can I speak? Continue, continue. I'm sorry. Okay. So, you know, I've seen uh, people, you know, who haven't studied in NLU. They are working in a very good corporate forms, like tier one forms. They're working in very nicely right now, because even I asked him, you know, an associate is there who's working in a CAM. So I asked him, you know, and he said, like, nowadays, uh, firms have, you know, started accepting students, like not seeing that they are studying in NLU or not. Abhi say, like this, I'm talking about present, but huh, five years ago, I feel ki, uh, you know, they used to take people, students from NLU only, but now it's slowly changing. I, I, I find it. So it is never that only NLU students are uh, going to be there in the top law firms. I'll tell you how it is. The first opportunity is most important. Yeah. Right? If I am uh, studying from an NLU and then uh, getting placements from the college, it is the first opportunity that I'm getting. My first opportunity is going to be easy. It is going to be better than everyone else. And I'm going to easily make my way out. However, it is never that the people people from other colleges are not going to get uh, into these forms. It is obviously that if you are uh, good at your work, if you know a lot of things, if you are good at law, if you are, you know, yeah, a skillful person, more or less, you're you're going to get into these firms. But going to an LLU just provides you an atmosphere, which makes it comparatively easier for you. 
so people there are people i think uh, this goes for every profession i'll say this goes for uh, engineering when we talk of iit this goes for medical if we talk for take if we talk of aims and similarly in uh, law if we talk about any news yes. what they do is uh, they just provide you an easy opportunity you work hard in your uh, entrance exams you get into a good college and then you don't have to work hard after your college for getting a good job however it is never that the person who has not got into an nlu he has failed to get admission or uh, he he will he'll fail in getting a job in those firms it is it is never like that it is just that if you work hard before the college the after college life getting into form gets a little easier the way gets a little smooth and convenient it's just that so uh, for the ones who were not able to get admission in nlus and who were uh, not able to crack the nlus or any exams you should never feel hopeless it is not the end of the world it is just that you have to you'll be getting a little lesser exposure compared to the uh, nlus but it is never the end of the world it is yet again that you can anything work hard be good at your skills and get an admission and uh, any any uh, sorry get to work in any firm any company that you want to work in and uh, you know so the main topic today i want to talk about is your journey of you know four years that you have completed in your and now right now you are in a final year right so yes so today i want to talk about your journey you know going back from the first year or from the you know the time you started preparing for clat you know your uh, why did you choose this career why did you choose law to be your career and you know right now i feel even i joined law you know as for career but if you go deep into it somewhere it becomes very you know a student can become very passionate about it i feel so today i'm going to talk about these things and so the first question is like you know uh, you know what decided you to you know uh, study law so uh, i had a few professions in my mind like since i was a 12 13 year old child i used to fantasize a few things here and there i used to think of becoming a policeman i used to think of becoming a lawyer or maybe a few things here and there say as i told you i wanted to get in business like in when i was in class 12th or something i was not very sure about it but then after a point of time uh say when i passed my class 12th then i somehow properly decided to get into law and the reason i i was never able to figure out that why particularly i choose law but for sure it was a noble profession it was a profession of power and responsibility at the same time right as a lawyer you had have a power uh, and now when i try to define power power is your capacity to make changes the positive changes that society needs that people around you need you have a power to add value to to, to the lives of people to the litigants in the court who are suffering in the process of law to the innocents to the ones who maybe are the victims to the ones who are accused and maybe falsely accused or maybe they did a mistake and the ones who are suffering at large lawyers are the thought leaders right and this is such a noble profession i yeah. i i see people talking bad talking ill about our profession sometimes but yet again if you are accused in a false fir anyhow these are the people who are going to approach us at the end of the day right people i've seen people talking ill about legal profession that all the lawyers are liars and so what and so forth that there's a famous saying if you would have heard of it in uh, in hindi it is jo kuch nahi kar pate wo wakalat karte hain I I don't know whether you have heard of it or not. Yeah, I have heard it. Is, it is very it is very much a saying. So, यही वकालत जो लोग करते हैं आप जब थक जाएंगे जब आप हार जाएंगे जब आपकी प्रॉपर्टी पे किसी ने पोजीशन ले लिया होगा आपको 
कुछ चोरी हो गया होगा आप यू नो यू वुड हैव बीन बेसिकली आपको किसी भी फॉल्स एफआईआर में इम्प्लीकेट कर दिया गया होगा कोई भी फॉल्स प्रोसीडिंग चल रही होगी गवर्नमेंट के आप सताए हुए होंगे आप इन्हीं लॉयर्स के पास जा पाएंगे आपके पास और कोई ऑप्शन नहीं होगा जब टॉप मोस्ट अथॉरिटीज टॉप मोस्ट पॉलिटिशियंस टॉप मोस्ट एलिटिस्ट ऑफ द एलिटिस्ट क्राउड जो आप लोग को जब परेशान करेगा किसी तरीके से तो कॉमन मैन कैन ओनली नॉक वन डोर दैट इज द डोर ऑफ जुडिशरी एंड फॉर दैट डोर बार एंड बेंच आई थिंक बोथ होल्ड एन इक्वल वैल्यू सो दैट्स वाई द प्रोफेशन आई थिंक द प्रोफेशन चूज मी मोर देन आई चूज द प्रोफेशन यू कैन कंटिन्यू I don't know somehow. I don't know somehow it came. It just came. And one more thing, I used to uh, fantasize was there was a serial uh, that used to come on uh, TV. There was this TV serial named Adalat. If you ever heard, yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen. Yeah, uh, K D Pathak. It was it was just amazing, buddy. I uh, I used to watch it when I was I was twelve or thirteen, I guess, and I used to love that. So that made me. Uh, little attracted towards the field of law okay so another question is like you know uh, what was your time table while you were you were preparing for slat clat or any law entrance test and you know what were the steps that you uh, and how did you crack uh, slat and what were the procedures of you know uh, for studying in uh, symbiosis so i'll tell you what my uh, numbers in clat at uh, back at that point of time was 118 out of 200 uh, yeah at that time the exam used to be of 200 marks i think now the format has changed and a lot of things have changed up and down but uh, at that point of time i got 4500 rank or something if i'm not wrong if i'm not mistaken it has been long it has been more than 3 to 4 years so it might be a few ranks here and there but it was approximately around 4500 Uh, rank and apart from it there were other few colleges uh, a few private colleges where i also got admission but i chose to come to uh, symbiosis for the brand value that it had and uh, talking about my preparations see uh, i was not to be honest and uh, i was not very good in my studies before class 12 i didn't even know the basics of it i was i was i was just a average uh, student who never used to say be in the top 10 of the class or who you never used to fail as well say above 60 and below 70 or below 75 yeah so the typical average student and uh, when i started preparing for clat i was way passionate about it i don't know how it came all of a sudden i even when my board exams were were going on i used to prepare for say an hour or so i used to study one or two hours in a day for barely for clearing the exam but yes. when my uh, clat when i started preparing for clat exam i used to study you won't believe it i had a weekly target of 70 hours so 70 hours i used to either either it used to be 12 hours a day and then 8 hours mm-hmm. next day you know somehow uh, that kind of arrangement or it may be 10 hours 7 uh, days a week right that it was totally on me but there was a weekly target that i had which was uh, 70 hours and in that 70 hours i used to do a lot of things i used to uh, read a lot reading novels reading news even all of that was included in those 70 hours apart from that uh, solving puzzles uh, reasoning and uh, other practices as well which were good for my learning skills i used to do a lot of sudoku uh, which was uh, good for my reasoning and apart from it um, reading daily gk and all the other things that were needed uh, i used to attend classes Uh, i had weekend classes so it was 4 hours on saturday and 2 hours on sunday so 6 hours of the classes and another i'll say maybe 
four hours of uh, self study okay and you know what were the procedures of joining uh, any symbiosis college process of joining symbiosis i think like you know uh, you have to give slat uh, and i would do some interview yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, yes 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 so uh, unlike clat symbiosis is a three tier entrance exam so you have to first uh, prepare for the exam clear the exam when you get an opportunity you have to go there you have to uh, give the pi round personal interview and there's also one gd that you have to give it was gd or some kind of discussion i think it, i'm missing on it but it was a three tier uh, selection process i'm okay. sure about the exam sure about the personal interview third one was i think gd okay so another question you know um, as a fifth year law student what key lessons or insights have you gained throughout your legal education see something i want to uh, i always tell my juniors and the offices where i work and also in my colleges you should uh, select your niche in the very beginning you should decide your way clear ahead so that you can pursue it properly in 5 years of your law there are i'll, I'll broadly classify i'll i'll try to broadly classify it say when you are done with your law yeah. there are 6 to 7 broad ways that you can pursue right i'm uh, again let me say that i'm broadly classifying it it is not it, these are not the exhaustive ways but broadly this is something that people pursue first is corporate everyone knows of it second is judiciary third is litigation fourth is teaching line right you can fifth is for the studies llm and for the phd and everything Sixth is in-house counsel, and uh, apart from it, I think I've covered corporate litigation, teaching, uh, for the studies, more or less these, uh, uh, and also the government exams, like JAG and uh, yeah. other similar exams that you can immediately give uh, give after your LLB. Apart from it, there are some exams you have to. Uh, give after getting some amount of experience so these are all covered so once you decide what you have to literally pursue you what you can do is you can act accordingly yeah right uh, say if you have to pursue litigation doing more and more internships will help you a lot when you get to the field yeah right because litigation is all about practical experience and experience yes. it is never about the research that you it is obviously about the office research that you are doing finding the appropriate case laws and other research but not the research papers that you are writing i mean these things are important but you have to obviously uh, classify into what is more important and what is less important and when you are into litigation you need to learn how to file how to draft how to argue these th- these are the top three skills that you have to learn as a litigator and for that you have to for sure go for internships secondly if you have to uh, if you want to pursue judiciary you have to be well versed with your sections you have to remember each and every section of uh, mainly of cpc crpc ipc and other such uh, books other such acts which are important you have to uh, focus more on your studies and you have to make sure that throughout your college when these subjects are coming you make proper notes of it so that it makes things easy for you in future yes. when you are about to give appear for the exams and uh, when you are going for corporate your preparations are going to be altogether different again over there also you have to uh, focus on your uh, internships but those internships have to be in corporate forms starting from tier 2 form then going on to tier 1 and maybe tier 3 also but selectively corporate forms yeah apart from that you have to write a lot of research papers you have to do uh, say moot courts which helps your cv and a good grade throughout your yeah. college that has to be a constant for corporate because when uh, corporate forms come for uh, 
campus placements, they look into all these things. Whereas this is not the case in litigation. Whenever you join a litigation office, they'll see what are your skills, to what extent you can represent them in the court, to what extent you can make their tasks easy, which is nowhere related to marks. I'll say. Yeah. And even for the judiciary, there is uh, some criteria, I don't know, a certain level of marks that you have to get, but it is not way too high. But in corporate, yeah. if you want to get into the top tier corporate firms, when they come to your campus for placements or for selections, they only have just one thing in their hand. That is your CV. How strong your CV is, it defines uh, your chance of getting selected in those forms. So, more or less, the field or the job at the end of the day that you want to do, your if you if you have it clear in your mind in the beginning of law school itself that I want to pursue this, it'll make it way easier. I'm yes. very sure about it. And apart from it also, uh, what I'll say is, you should also choose a category or a, say a subject that you want to, say if you want to pursue litigation, then what litigation do you want to pursue? Do you want to be a criminal lawyer? Do you want to be a corporate lawyer, a taxation yeah. lawyer? There are multiple options. Area of interest. But yeah, area of interest. You have to particularly, and I know what, uh, there's a concern that I've seen in my juniors, which even I had at some point of time, was what if my area of interest changes after a point of time? Yeah. Right. So, suppose, Nathan, uh, right now you are interested in criminal law. Yeah. You go through criminal law, you give some extra amount of effort which is needed for preparing yourself for the criminal law and criminal litigation. You start preparing for it. You study a lot of it. Is it anyhow that after a point of time, if you develop interest in some other area of law, yeah. is it not that you can change it at any point of time? It, it will. You can, obviously, if you are well versed with criminal law and if you are after some point of time interested in family law and matrimonial laws, you can also master in that. Yeah, we can but for that. mastering for mastering in something, you have to at least choose one area of it. Yeah, something even I have, I have a personal question, like, you know, while we are preparing for any corporate form, like any student from first year who is very sure that he'll be preparing or he'll be joining anyone, uh, any law firm after completing his uh, final year. So, you know, we have to choose one area of interest and regularly I've seen, uh, you know, right now who's like associate working in good firms, good tier firms. And I've seen that uh, regularly interned only in one area of interest so that, you know, they'll master it. Like just as you said it and they get people and they just start working. That's what I've seen that's going on in corporate field. So, you know, I had uh, one more question, you know, uh, drafting is very important. Drafting yes, is very right. important, but uh, right. I I still don't know drafting. You know, I want to learn drafting, but I don't know where can I learn it from. Like, can you, can we post, purchase any course or you know, do you know any courses that we can purchase and actually learn? Because abhi it's like I cannot go to court every day because colleges are colleges like it's open and you know, for internship vacation there's like only two months in a whole year. So. It's, it's getting difficult uh, for upcoming law students, like it will be better, you know, if an upcoming law students can know it. But huh, first and second year law students, this is a problem. Drafting, pe, you know, it's a little bit difficult. Pahle pen, we are, you always question that we are learning these things. See, uh, what I've been telling my uh, juniors all the time and I'll also tell you this. I don't know whether you've done this or not, but for drafting you have to read a lot of files yes primarily even for the basic of the drafting at least you have to read 50 files 50 to 100 files i'll say if you've gone through 50 to 100 files it is only at that point of time you you will be able to figure out what is the legal language that has to be used for drafting right having a good english and having a good legal language are two distinct 
distinct and separate things. Yeah. So there's a good probability that even if you're having a very good English, your drafting might not be good because you have not gone through enough number of files, you have not read enough number of judgments, and you've you've not read basically the legal language that is being used while drafting, that is being used by the judges while uh, passing their judgments. So that is very important. Something I've I've not been able to follow. Uh, to be honest, but uh, what I had been uh, suggested by uh, one of my teachers is you should regularly, you should daily read at least one judgment. Okay. It'll make you really well versed with the language, the legal language that has to be used. Apart from it, for the first two years, when you go to the uh, when you go for your internships, you should just keep reading files and files and just keep reading the files. See, reading the files is also not very easy. If you have a 500 page file and you'll see your seniors completing those files, reading those files within a few minutes itself. Right. Then what they'll do is they'll fata 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 scroll the pages, they'll see something, scroll the pages, and they know what the facts of the cases are. So in every file, there is some part that is relevant. There is some part that is highly relevant. And then there is some part which is important. You have to categorize. Yeah. Right? And Enigures are there. What enigure is important? What enigure is not important? Even if enigure is attached, then what part of that enigure is important? What is the index? What is the memo of parties? Apart from it, there are a lot of things that you'll only get to learn when you start scrolling through those files regularly. And reading those files will not just make it easy for you. I mean the reading wala part, but it will also uh, teach you the language that has to be used in legal drafting. Yes. Once you start uh, doing these judgments, once you start uh, going through the files, after that, I think you can uh, maybe ask any of your seniors in the your in the firms or in the offices that you're working to give you some kind of drafting, more or less, and. Uh, for sure, they'll not give you something very important in the beginning, but legal notices and applications more or less are some things that you can easily do in the very beginning itself. Right? So, but for that, you have to learn legal language. For that, you have to read a lot. You have to read judgments. You have to read files. You have to read plaints. You have to read suits. Everything. Everything you have to read a lot. And uh, just something to be pointed out here is our profession is such that to you such that you have to keep reading throughout your life yeah you know before this recording i was studying a judgment and it was very difficult for me to just you know i've just started studying today itself only i was just studying and it was very difficult and i was like it's so long when will it get completed and how do you know uh, lawyers they you know advocates they just finish it up so fast and you just they're like so sure see i've i've not been able to figure that out completely but uh, certainly I'm better than I, how I used to be three to four years back yeah. in reading those judgments of uh, maybe 50 pages, 100 pages. And there are some extending up to the 1000 pages. I've seen a judgment of 1000 pages as well. So that is not a big deal at all. And uh, something uh, funny I'll tell you is uh, when you are supposed to do a research, there is a structure of judgment, right? So primarily, what is the dispute in a judgment? You you'll you'll see you'll be able to figure out that structure when you try reading it. A judgment will start with what is the dispute. Yeah. Then it will go on to what are the contentions of the petitioner or the plaintiff. Then it will go on to uh, understanding the contentions or uh, uh, what the respondent has to say the contentions of the respondent basically and after that it will go into analysis and then the conclusion or what the court has held 
which is generally the, after going through so and so argument the court has held that or the court has yeah. come to a conclusion that which is just the last part of the judgment not the facts of the case not the contentions of the uh, petitioner or the plaintiff and not the, nor the contentions of the respondent the things that we cite in the court after doing research are the uh, is the part that the court has held yeah the findings of the court right and uh, for that you have to go to the last of the judgment you will uh, start scrolling from bottom of it and you will easily be able to find what the judgment has held this is my tip for you primarily what i saw my uh, fellow interns doing um, who were reporting under me are what they used to do was they used to in the research what they used to do they used to cite what the petitioner has uh, said the contention of the petitioner say if it is me versus you yeah and the judgment cites what i am saying it is not anyhow relevant for the court if i am citing me versus you ka case in another court what matters to the court is what the court has held in this case in our case not what i am saying or what you are saying i understand right? yeah say uh, see if we have a land dispute i say that i have so and so land and this is my right to hold this land yeah and you say that you do not have a right to say that land what i am saying is i have this right uh, i have this land and i have a right over it so this is not relevant in research what the court concludes after that what the decision of the court is relevant because we are uh, contending some uh, opposite things i am saying this and you are saying this meanwhile what we are saying both of us what we are saying is not relevant until it is approved by the court until it is concluded by the court yes so you have to also be careful by researching ki kaun sa party of to cite in the judgment uh, for the say for your case if you are uh, uh, citing if you are referring to a judgment and from that judgment if you are referring to a part which was the contention of the lawyer it can obviously go against you so reading that is also pretty much an art you will be able to uh, read it properly only when you uh, understand the structure of it yes and you will understand the structure of it when you start reading it so pretty much goes around the circle so um, then another question is like i want you to start with the also, also something sorry okay. sorry to interrupt uh, something that i would like to add is what you can do is if you are reading the judgment in your computer what you can do uh, is you can use the find function and enter the keywords that you want to search on right so if we uh, say if there's a judgment on question of fir and you want to uh, you want to find as to the where the question can be done so you, what you can do is you can press control f you can enter the word question and from the bottom of the judgment you can start reading there after going through a few judgments five or 10 judgments you will be able to understand as to what is the point from where the judge has starting uh, started concluding the judgment and what is the binding part of the judgment yeah. but what you have to do is you have to file uh, you have to press control f start uh, enter the keyword that you want to read or enter the sentence that you want to uh, figure out in the judgment start reading from the bottom of the judgment and uh, that's how you'll be able to um, easily do your research uh, and another question i had uh, about internship how did you secure the internship in first year before starting you know internship i've seen student interning co- college jane se bhi pehle abhi like you know they interning before and they like in yes yes aur unhone saath saath internship waise hi kar chuke hain so you know what do you think about this like what is your opinion on this see uh, something i'll tell you is i'll i'll strongly suggest you is for i've seen a lot of students in the first and second year jo internships ke liye yes they are they are literally crazy for internships you should not be that way you should see as to what are the literal opportunities that you are getting and 
what are the places uh, and what are the offices or what are the jobs that are meant to just exploit you yeah right in legal internships in most of the cases we are not paid at all yeah what people tend to do is they uh, have some task like some article writing or some content yeah. writing which is their personal task they have to build their website they have to make their uh, website and they have to publish it somewhere what they do is uh, considering the enthusiasm that first and second year law students have they tend to exploit the students in the name of a certificate yes and trust me that that certificate holds no value yes that certificates holds zero value and quality is always about quantity in internships at any point of time if you are doing 8 to 10 internships and uh, if those internships are in some xyz name yeah. websites that are just offering you a certificate and that are those are making you write some articles or making you call people for some referrals yes. or that kind of job then uh, sorry but corporates do not consider those right uh, i feel like you all. know my first internship was quite a push up to me it was like very helpful i guess uh, we did together we like we were together in that internship so yes yes it was very useful to me because we never used to get work but he used to teach us what a law student yes, right. you know, what a life will be after you finish your fifth year and that life lessons i think it was very valuable and you know a push up to me in first year and i was like right amazing amazed by seeing because i've heard from people like you know they're just working article they're doing this as you said right now okay you know they're given to write article blogs but um when i was like i i had you know nothing in my mind i was just like okay i need to find a good internship and i need to i need to join but every day you know like just for that one one and a half hours i used to you know sit there and used to hear him and it was so valuable it's it was very valuable it was it was for sure it was it added a lot of value and as a matter of fact i've i worked under many seniors who are you know who are really helpful who teach a lot of things who will tell you what is right and what is wrong and these are the kind of internships that you need to focus on yeah and uh, something i'll tell you is how i got uh, we were on the question as to how i got my first internship yes so uh, first internship that i got was in some ngo in delhi and I'll, i'll not name the ngo as it was an eminent ngo and i had no work to do i had to just report twice two days a week i had to go to that ngo sit in there for an hour or so uh, do some time pass and then come back and just this was the this was something that i had been doing during that internship for the first few days and later i uh, observed that i was investing my money in staying yeah uh, in accommodating uh, in my accommodation because i was staying in delhi which is not my hometown i was uh, spending a lot of money for on my food and other things as well and it was just a waste of time if i kept pursuing that uh, internship so what i since yes. uh, as a background of something that i want to tell you uh, as a background i would like to tell you that main first generation lawyer hu and i had no no links anyhow yes. mere koi bhi links nahi the delhi mein zero links zero contacts to uh, i decided ki mujhe karna hai kuch litigation mein try karna hai ya courts mein try karna hai uh, me and my friend one of my friend was there who was still in law school so what we did was we decided to go to a district court this is our court and we went in our uniform mm-hmm. and we randomly started asking people uh, lawyers sir aap hame internship doge hum first year ke law student hain yahan se hum pad rahe hain aap sir aap hame internship doge humne do teen logo se baat kari एंड उसके बाद किसी ने हमको बोला कि आप बार काउंसिल के ऑफिस में जाइए वहां जाके आप एक काम कीजिए बात कीजिए बार काउंसिल में वो आपको पक्का कहीं ना कहीं रिकमेंड कर देंगे सो व्हाट दैट इट वाज दे रिकमेंडेड मी टू अ चैम्बर बोथ ऑफ अस वेंट टू दैट चैम्बर वी टॉक टू द सीनियर ही गिव अस दैट इंटर्नशिप वी स्टार्टेड वर्किंग देयर एज वेल सो दैट्स हाउ 
I did two internships simultaneously in the first internship. And it was my first litigation internship back in 2019 when I joined the college. And that was the time I decided that I want to go for litigation. So it was, a, it was, I don't know. See, you never know how things happen. Yeah. You went for an internship in an NGO. The NGO was not giving you sufficient work. You went to the court. Somehow someone suggested you to go to the office of bar council. Then they recommended you some other office and you joined it. And that's how things work. So there's no hard and fast rule. However, what you can do is you can be active on LinkedIn if you want to get internships. Yeah. Uh, you can write mails to the advocate that, that you want to work under. Or what you can do is you can go to the court, sit in the courtrooms, observe the proceedings, and see who are the lawyers who are arguing really well. Right? So if you go to the high court, there are rosters of the high court. So a particular judge or a particular bench would be dealing with criminal or a particular judge or a particular bench would be dealing with civil cases, so on and so forth. So what you can do is you can sit in that courtroom, observe the proceedings, and after observing for two to three days, you'll get to know that lawyer is doing good and many cases. You can personally approach them. Say you'll get a few rejections, but lawyers should never be afraid of rejections. Yeah, and lawyers should never be afraid of rejections. And after approaching two to three people, you'll uh, easily get an internship. And you know, I feel that you didn't stop. Like you know, even after you were in NGO, you were in an NGO, and you were like, okay, हमें काम नहीं मिल रहा कुछ होने रहा. You didn't stop yourself because there are students जो होते के हाँ भाई NGO मिल गया, they like certificate मिल जाएगा, college पे दिखा दूँगा. But you had that drive के कुछ करना पड़ेगा. So that you know, uske baad you got this chance. Yeah, what I'll tell you is, jo internship ki main baat kar raha hu na, jo maine district court mein pehli baar kari thi, maine aaj tak us internship ka certificate nahi liya. Main le sakta hu at any point of time. Yeah. I am in good touch with every person who was working there. Yeah. At least four to five of associates, sir ke saath, sab log ke saath mein bahut achhe touch mein hu. They have been my mentors and. Uh, altogether very good seniors and uh, throughout my college life unse meri kabhi na kabhi kuch na kuch baat bhi hoti rahi lekin maine abhi tak wo certificate collect nahi kiya because if you want to pursue litigation certificates hardly adds any values yeah uh, adds any value aur agar aap corporate mein ja rahe ho to corporate ko in certificates se bahut kam farak padega corporate ko un certificates se farak padega jo sahi mein corporate jobs hain Yeah. जो उस प्रोफाइल के सर्टिफिकेट्स हैं जिस प्रोफाइल पे वो आपको हायर करना चाहते हैं सो इफ यू आर बीइंग हायर्ड फॉर अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ड्राफ्टिंग प्रोफाइल देन वो कॉर्पोरेट चाहेगा कि आपकी प्रीवियस सर्टिफिकेट्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ड्राफ्टिंग के हो एटलीस्ट नहीं तो कॉर्पोरेट सेक्टर में yeah. इधर उधर के बहुत ज्यादा सर्टिफिकेट उनको फर्क नहीं पड़ता उनको फर्क पड़ता है आपके काम से आपके या तो एक्सपीरियंस जो बहुत अच्छी फॉर्म में रहा उससे नहीं and uh, making content for youtube and i just don't want to waste my time i just want to keep on doing something or the other so yeah yeah maybe we we kar raha hu abhi filhal and another thing i wanted to ask you ki difference kya tha you know the first internship and abhi jo the last internship we have had the difference kya tha uske see uh, there are some some internships that are good internships and there are some internships those are not good internships even in good internships if you are working at various companies or various offices or various profiles you can never compare them yeah okay to aap kabhi unko compare nahi kar sakte because koi office kuch value add kar raha hai koi office kuch value add kar raha hai koi office kuch value add kar raha hai koi aapko kuch sikha raha hai aur koi kuch aur sikha raha hai jo ki sab cheeze equally important hoti hai ha but i mean the Uh, I mean the difference in you, like first internship करते हो क्या था और अभी last internship में कितना difference you know देखने को मिला तुम्हें अपने आप पर। यार uh, see 
evolution is something that you don't get to understand how you are evolving but people get yeah. to so primarily us time law ka bilkul bhi knowledge nahi tha us time attitude ek alag tha kaam ko leke ab kaam ko leke attitude alag hai us time understanding cheezon ka alag tha immature understanding tha jaisa first or second year ke law students ka hota hai ab kaam ko leke cheezon ko leke field ko leke understanding alag hai एक प्रैक्टिकल जो व्यू पॉइंट है वो अब डेवलप हो चुका है क्योंकि काफी चीजें देख ली हैं पिछले चार या पांच साल में तब तो कुछ देखा नहीं तब तक सिर्फ लॉ स्कूल का एक सेमेस्टर देखा था जिसमें बस यू नो हाउ द फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर ऑफ लॉ स्कूल इज इट इज द कॉलेज लाइफ एंड देन यू आर जस्ट गेटिंग इन टू अटेंड वे ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट देन यू शुड बी उसके बाद सब चीज लाइक तुमने अपना कॉलेज लाइक इट वाज इन योर होम टाउन और लाइक इट वाज आउट नो नो इट वाज इट इज इन नागपुर आई एम फ्रॉम हिसार हरियाणा इट इज इन नागपुर महाराष्ट्र समवेयर अराउंड 1500 किलोमीटर्स अवे फ्रॉम माय होम टाउन ओके सो एक्सपेक्टेशंस कैसे थी और वहां जाने से पहले डिड इट चेंज सम एक्सपेक्टेशंस या देयर आर अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स यार यू नो व्हाट वी सी in movies is something we expect from our colleges hai na ki bahut sare group honge hum ye sab cheeze karenge aisa hoga waisa hoga you know we'll hang out we'll do parties we'll uh, attend the events and all kind of you know student of the year wala uh, perception yeah. har ladke ka har ladki ka hota hai college mein it is something that you but it is nowhere around ठीक है कॉलेज लाइफ इज इफ यू आर इन इन टू अ गुड कॉलेज इट मेक्स योर लाइफ रियली डिफिकल्ट इंटरनल एक्सटर्नल असाइनमेंट्स मूट कोर्ट्स रिसर्च पेपर्स एंड अक लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स इट इज अवर एंडिंग साइकिल फाइनल ईयर तक भी आप यही करते रहोगे करते रहोगे करते रहोगे हाँ स्टार्टिंग देर गोइंग टू बी अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स यूल डू यू मेक फ्रेंड्स दो फ्रेंडशिप्स विल ब्रेक you will get new friends and uh, the cycle goes on fir aapko ye this is a cycle that goes on for every person who yeah. newly joins a college so that is something which is meant to be experienced instead of being told so you should but uh, what else suggest is you should keep yourself stable in the yeah. first year of college which is very important i've seen people dropping out of college after completing their first year because of the experiences they've had in the first year and quite a few things that they get to see so just keep yes. yourself stable and i also feel like somewhere self doubt bhi ho jata hai like did you know am i the one to choose this college again ek self doubt se aa jata hai kabhi kabhi and um, no, ek consideration hai haan ji uh अभी तो मेरा बस फर्स्ट ईयर खत्म हो गया अभी मैं सेकेंड ईयर में पहुंच गया अभी तो जैसे मैं सेकेंड ईयर में पहुंचा माय एग्जाम सेमेस्टर एंड हो गया सेकेंड सेमेस्टर देन आई वाज लाइक अभी तो आने वाले चार साल भी बहुत जल्दी खत्म हो जाएगी बिकॉज यू नो ये फ्रेंडशिप वगैरह आई मैं पहले ही बोर्डिंग पर बैठ चुका तो आई ऑलरेडी हैव द एक्सपीरियंस कि घर से दूर रहना क्या है बिकॉज आने पहले ही दस साल रह चुका हुआ है ना गेन दिस फाइव ईयर इज लाइक ओके फाइन आई डू बट देन जैसे मेरा सेकेंड सेमेस्टर खत्म हो गया ना माइंड लाइक कुछ दिमाग पे आने लाइक अगर आने वाले चार साल भी इतनी जल्दी खत्म हो गया व्हाट विल आई डू अपने आप पे ये था कि टाइम बचेगा या नहीं यू नो दैट आई हैव टू डू दिस आई हैव टू डू दिस एंड आई हैव स्टार्टेड मैनेजिंग थिंग्स कि मुझे ये करना है ये करना है ये करना है बिकॉज आई एम स्केट समवेयर कि ये चार साल भी बहुत जल्दी बीत जाएगा जैसे मेरा एक साल पहले बीत चुका क्या डिड यू हैव लाइक इन दिस माइंड यू विल यू विल नेवर नो व्हेन दिस टाइम विल पास I mean I mean final year I have a few months left with me and I already feel that FOMO I feel that uh thing that after a year there will be no college yeah uh, the college time will be over the all our friends would be you know in their respective states and cities and things will change you'll get into work life and uh time kaise nikal jata hai na ye college ka you you never know You never know, trust me. आप देखते रह जाओगे एक साल से दो साल दो साल से तीन साल तीन साल से चार साल चार साल से पांच साल 
पता ही नहीं चलेगा बाय द एंड ऑफ योर कॉलेज लाइफ यू विल बी लाइक कि यार ये टाइम कैसे निकल गया अभी तो कॉलेज जॉइन ही किया था या दैट इज समवट लाइक यू नो आई वाज स्केयर्ड ऑफ एंड नाउ आई एम लाइक अभी करना पड़ेगा आई हैव टू स्टार्ट पुशिंग अप माय सेल्फ यू नो करना पड़ेगा दैट इज समथिंग दैट आई फेल्ट जब मेरा सेकंड सेमेस्टर खत्म हो गया व्हेन आई वाज रिटर्निंग बैक टू माय होम तो ये एक चीज था एंड अनदर क्वेश्चन ये था कि हैव यू डन लाइक कंपटीशंस वगैरह मूड कोच एंड मेडिटेशंस अ in the first two years of my college i did everything i did two inter uh, inter college moot court competitions i did two national competitions national moot competitions uske ilawa i was into organizing to uh, debates and all usme organizing team mein rehna uh, cultural mein i was never involved uske ilawa बेसिकली जो भी कॉम्पिटिशन होते हैं मीडिएशन वगैरह क्लाइंट काउंसलिंग एवरीथिंग आई यूज टू डू बट उसके बाद आफ्टर माय थर्ड ईयर आई स्टार्टेड फोकसिंग मोर ऑन माय लिटिगेशन साइड ऑफ वर्क तो आई स्टार्टेड डूइंग मोर एंड मोर इंटर्नशिप्स आई स्टार्टेड डूइंग ऑनलाइन एंड ऑफलाइन इंटर्नशिप्स तो एवरीथिंग आई स्टार्टेड डूइंग दैट वे तो एंड आई हैव सम ऑफ फ्यू क्वेश्चंस लाइक क्या प्रॉब्लम्स था यू नो व्हेन यू स्टार्टेड your mood competitions first year say because maine bhi first year i did a mood co- mood court competition national mood tha or i had nothing like law to hai hi nahi mere paas so i was just on my own doing things uh, thoda senior se help kiya and another question i have but uh, i've never seen uh, people talking about mediation before joining the college mood court ka itna hype rehta hai ki mediation ko bhool hi jate log now i feel ki mediation is coming out slowly slowly uh, so what what opinion do you have on this Yeah, to be honest, mediation is something that has not gained its ground as of now. Yeah. So, moot court is something which has been constantly uh, happening since the last few years. I'll say more than ten, fifteen years. Moot court competitions हो रहे हैं अलग-अलग level पे insta, oh, intra पे, intra पे तो हर college में in fact होते ही होते हैं. उसके बाद national भी होते हैं, international भी होते हैं. तो that is something which has gained prominence over time. and uh, this is the primary skill that every advocate needs to some you know uh, when i entered for the first year of my college um, i used to see you know there are long lines for you know this moot court committee just to enter this committee there are long lines i've seen especially for the first year they are so excited ki sabhi chale jaate interview dene ke liye so that they want to get into it, this committee it is same in every college buddy it is yeah. same in every college <laughs> because moot court has gained its ground over time there are huge competitions jinke awards bahut acche hote hain financially bhi or otherwise bhi opportunity ke terms mein it is very good uh, and it for short sure deserves every attention that it has but ha ek cheez jo mujhe lagti thi pehle ki i used to think ki moot court is exactly same to the court proceedings which is nowhere so even similar but ha ek structure same hai ki aapko draft karna hai draft karke aage aap bhejna hai uske basis pe aapka fir arguments honge but court is something totally different yeah wahan pe kitni hearings hoti hain pehli hearing pe kya hota hai dusri hearing pe kya hota hai it is uh, not completely same but ha ye hai ki agar if you want to uh, find a nearest substitute to litigation and to the court room practice it is um, for sure moot court and ha mediation jab real life mediation ka value badhega to mediation competitions ka bhi value badhega yeah. abhi ke date mein real life mediation is a is not on that huge level ki har jagah mediation nahi hota हर केस में मेडिएशन नहीं होता बट लिटिगेशन हर केस में होता है यस तो हम लिटिगेशन और मेडिएशन को देखेंगे और वैसे ही अगर हम मूट कोर्ट और मेडिएशन कंपटीशन को देखेंगे तो विल गेट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट एंड यू नो फर्स्ट ईयर पे कैसा एक्सपीरियंस रहा जब यू वेंट फ्रॉम मूट ऑब्वियसली यार डर लगता है ये सब चीजें फर्स्ट टाइम करना यू वांट अ स्पीकर और व्हाट आई आई वाज अ स्पीकर आई वाज अ स्पीकर I was a speaker, or I said that when it was our first moot court competition, we were planning that no, we will leave, we will stay at home, we will go home. But 
उसके बाद देन अ रिसर्चर अ नाइट बिफोर द मोट कोट कॉम्पिटिशन वेंट होम लाइक छोड़ो नहीं होगा हो गया जा रहा हूँ मैं घर जा रहा हूँ तो स्पीकर वन एंड स्पीकर टू बोथ ऑफ अस वी गेव दट कॉम्पिटिशन बोथ ऑफ दैम आर रियली गुड फ्रेंड ऑफ माइंड द अदर स्पीकर एंड द रिसर्चर बोथ ऑफ दैम आर रियली गुड फ्रेंड्स एंड उस उसके बाद हमने वो कॉम्पिटिशन किया माई रैंक वॉज सेवन अमंग सिक्सटी टीम्स और समथिंग सो इट वॉज क्वाइट गुड एंड वी वर इन टू द लास्ट नाइट प्रिपरेशन वी डिड नॉट प्रिपेयर अ लॉट फॉर इट एक एक रात दो रात पहले तैयारी करी और जस्ट इट वॉज गुड दिस इज सेम वट है So this is same what happened with us. College, uh, this our last day was exam semester one ka, and then we get a you know uh, email from uh, Mood Coach side telling us that we have to go for the competition. And this is our members. We decided who will be speaker, who will be uh, researcher. Kaega. So we were very good friends. So you know, first day I entered, and uh, my researcher test. I went as a researcher. So my researcher test, and a long hoardings just falls down, and I see Nalsa at the top. Then CNLU, then DNLU. Okay, so there are 30 colleges. Then I was like. Show shock for the first time because up to my first competition was, and then out of 30 colleges, when we ranked on the top five, like what is by the you know, as a whole top eight, we were top five. Then I was shocked. First, to it was that you know after reaching at that point, I thought that let's go further. Okay, we can do something. It was a bit of a you know push for the first time because let's go mood start. Now we can do it well. Second time, more better. थर्ड टाइम वो बेटर करेंगे ना आई थिंक कि वो ग्रेजुअली इंक्रीज तो होएगा बट हाँ एक एक्साइटमेंट सा था जब हम गए थे बिकॉज इट वॉज इन गुजरात तो यू नो पुणे से गुजरात जाना था एंड वी थ्री फ्रेंड्स ऑल फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ईयर गोइंग टू अनदर कॉलेज फॉर अ कॉम्पिटिशन सो अलग सा सीन था हमारा कॉलेज से रात को हम निकले देन वी रीच एंड देन वी लाइक वाओ इट्स सो फैंसी इट्स सो फैंसी टू सी एंड हियर देन वहाँ जाने के बाद पता चला एंड देन इट वेंट लाइक वेरी वेल very well very well and mai aur ek cheez kehna chahta hu you know coming law students ko ya fir jo bhi first step hai to explore when you go for competition i feel like explore karna bahut important hai for sure and the initial two years of uh, law school you have to explore everything everything third year se i think you should make it clear in your head ki kya karna hai uske liye ek strategy banao strategy pe kaam karna shuru karo and then keep moving ahead without distracting yourself here and there so first two years may to understand what you have to do you need to pursue every possible thing. yes every possible thing so that you get to know what is good for you what interests you a lot what is something that matters to you what makes you feel good so first two years try everything then after uh, two years try being precise about what you like what you want to do and keep moving in that direction and you know one problem that i faced like you know when i entered in first i was very like you know one of those over excited kids ki whatever comes the way i'll just say yes <laughs> by the time my semester exam said there i was just working with the things that i you know left there ki maine ha har cheez ko yes to bola and i have to start working for this to is chakkar pe bhi thoda semester ka you know मार्क्स घट जाते हैं बट हाँ बट आई वॉज लाइक नो आई जस्ट नो बैरियर आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू की एक ही चीज पे मुझे स्टॉप नहीं करना था ये था मेरा फर्स्ट स्टेप है बट समेर ये थोड़ा एडवांटेज भी हो जाता है बट हाँ डिसएडवाटेज भी होता है बिकॉज यू हैव टू वर्क टू मच टू मच जो फर्स्ट ईयर्स वाले बस इंजॉय करते हैं वेन यू सी फर्स्ट ईयर स्टूडेंट्स इंजॉइंग एन यूर वर्किंग कि हाँ हमें ये टाइम पे सबमिट करना है ये करना ये चीज भी था दैट यू नो आई हैव टू फेस जब मैं फर्स्ट ईयर पे था and baki sab to it was like uh, i guess you have noticed me or you have seen me internship pe main zyada bolta nahi tha i just used to keep on uh, watch and keep on laugh jo sarcasms the hote the wahan pe maza aata tha to be honest i used to enjoy it see what uh, people think is ki hum agar kaam kar rahe hain to hum enjoy nahi kar sakte which yeah. is not the case the skill that you have to always have Throughout life, is you need to learn how to enjoy while working. आपके पास काम होगा काम आप दो घंटे चार घंटे छह घंटे करोगे ज्यादा से ज्यादा जोर लगा के आठ घंटे करोगे उससे ज्यादा तो नहीं करोगे ना और जो नहीं कर रहे हैं वो बिल्कुल ही नहीं कर रहे हैं तो 
जितना काम कर रहे हो उसके साथ एंजॉय कैसे करना है दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द स्किल दैट यू हैव टू लर्न फॉर हैविंग अ प्रॉपर वर्क लाइफ बैलेंस अदरवाइज आई हैव सीन पीपल गेटिंग इनटू डिप्रेशन यस आई हैव सीन पीपल गेटिंग इनटू स्ट्रेस एंड टू सम एक्सटेंट इट इज ओके बट ऑब्वियसली यू हैव टू डील विद इट यू हैव टू फिगर आउट द वे ऑफ फाइटिंग विद your stress and if you are just into the work all the times and then it gets really difficult so you have to learn how to enjoy with your work and that helps a lot and uh, you know okay now we are almost in to an end of our podcast because i had some certain sure. criteria that i had to cover up like internship competitions your you know personal experiences that you have had so this is the i guess like you know every student need you know abhi jo i'm going to speak uh, is the connection being a first generation lawyer dekho we don't have a mom dad who will be make our connection for us so definitely we have to you know push up and just uh, jao court pe as you know just you said like you went for internship and internship me li bhi you know how did you made up your connection you know from the first year see for me there are two kind of connections वन इज कि आप किसी के पीछे पड़े रहो सर ये सर वो सर प्लीज सर सर ऐसा सर सर वैसे सर दैट इज मोर ऑफ अ मर्सी काइंड ऑफ कनेक्शन कि यू आर लिविंग ऑन समवंस मर्सी एंड जस्ट दैट पार्ट ऑफ दैट देन देर इज अनदर काइंड ऑफ कनेक्शन जहां पे वो आपकी लाइफ में वैल्यू ऐड कर रहे हैं और आप उनकी लाइफ में वैल्यू ऐड कर रहे हैं यस एंड दीज आर द लॉन्ग टर्म कनेक्शन अगर कोई आपको एक मर्सी के बेसिस पे आ, कुछ प्रोवाइड कर रहा है तो वो कनेक्शन बहुत कम टाइम तक चलता है क्योंकि आप उससे एक फेवर ले रहे हो जिसका आप जिसके बदले आप उसको कुछ दे नहीं सकते लेकिन अगर आपका कनेक्शन उस तरह का है कि आप वैल्यू किसी से अपनी लाइफ में जितना ऐड करवाना चाहते हो उतना ही वैल्यू आप भी उनकी लाइफ में ऐड कर सकते हो यस yes. तो दीज आर द कनेक्शन दैट आर ऑलवेज सक्सेसफुल बिकॉज यहाँ पे हर इंसान को एक दूसरे का इक्वल नीड होता है तो यू हैव टू फिगर आउट फॉर मतलब सी ऑब्वियसली देर आर अदर काइंड ऑफ कनेक्शन एज वेल जहाँ पे मैं भी हूँ सिचुएशन में जहाँ पे मैं भी मेरे भी बहुत ऐसे कनेक्शन हैं जहाँ पे मैं कुछ वैल्यू एड नहीं कर पाता हूँ लेकिन वो कनेक्शन एक टाइम तक चलते हैं yeah. अच्छे कनेक्शन हमेशा वो चलते हैं जहाँ पे आप भी किसी को वैल्यू एड कर पा रहे हो किसी की लाइफ में और वो भी आपकी लाइफ में वैल्यू एड तो यू हैव टू फिगर आउट कि आप कैसे किसी के लाइफ में वैल्यू ऐड कर सकते हो आप किसी के लिए क्या कर सकते हो क्यों कोई आपसे फेवर मांगेगा और क्या अगर वो फेवर मांगेगा तो आप क्या उस फेवर को प्रोवाइड कर सकते हो तो दैट इज समथिंग दैट यू हैव टू फिगर आउट कुछ लोगों के लिए वो स्किल रिसर्च होती है कुछ लोगों के लिए ड्राफ्टिंग होती है कुछ लोगों के लिए अदर काइंड ऑफ हेल्प होती है कुछ भी फेवर होते हैं या फिर कुछ भी चीज होती है तो क्या ऐसी चीज है जो आप दूसरे बंदे को दे पा रहे या तो वो चीज आप फिगर आउट करो और फिर अपने कनेक्शंस बनाने पे ध्यान दो क्योंकि कनेक्शंस आर ऑलवेज अबाउट म्यूचुअल फेवर यस इट इज नेवर अबाउट वन साइडेड फेवर फ्रॉम वन पर्सन वेर एज द अदर पर्सन इज प्रोवाइडिंग नथिंग एंड इवन इफ से समन इज प्रोवाइडिंग यू फेवर they have certain expectations from you in long run you'll believe it i guess even if you don't you'll get to observe it at some point of time ki agar aapko koi bhi koi favor de bhi raha hai to aaj nahi to long run mein at least uska aapse kuch na kuch yes. expectation hoga ki kush na kuch aap uski life mein value add karo yeah kuch basic expectation honge jaise ki respect karna acche se baat karna obey karna ये सब तो है ही है उसके बाद लॉन्ग टर्म में वैल्यू ऐड करना भी तो जितना आप वो चीज कर पाएंगे उतने आपके रिलेशन अच्छे होंगे इसके अलावा लिंकडिन प्लेटफॉर्म्स गोइंग टू द कोर्ट मीटिंग पीपल एंड समथिंग आई वांट एवरी लॉ स्टूडेंट टू रिमेंबर इज कि लॉ स्कूल में जो आपके कनेक्शन है अभी आपके कॉम्पिटिशन हो सकते हैं लेकिन लॉन्ग टर्म में कंपटीशन नहीं है कनेक्शन या तो व्हाट लॉ स्टूडेंट्स टिपिकली डू इज बिकॉज़ दे आर इन लॉ स्कूल 
they've just entered into the law school so out of their envy and jealousy they start uh, treating their peers as their competition mm. <coughs> however these people are not, are not your competition law school nikal jayega uske baad ye log hi aapke connection honge they are going to be your most helpful connections because you have a uh, you have had a college life with them you have spent 5 years yes somewhere or the other you have added value to their lives and they have added value to your yeah. right this is how i defined connections recently yeah तो वो कनेक्शन सबसे ज्यादा आपके लॉ स्कूल के वो होंगे पीयर्स होंगे उसके जब आप बाद आप अपनी फील्ड में उतर जाओगे तो आपके कलीग्स आपके लिटिगेशन में फेलो एडवोकेट सब ये सब लोग आपके बहुत अच्छे कनेक्शन होंगे आपके सीनियर्स अगर आप उनको अच्छे से ट्रीट कर रहे हो बहुत रिस्पेक्ट दे पा रहे हो एंड इफ दे आर ऑफ हेल्पफुल नेचर दे बीयर कनेक्शन असोसिएट्स जो लोग आपकी एज से पाँच छः साल ही बड़े हैं those people are going to be very helpful as your connections yeah. aapke law school ke seniors wo log bhi aapko bahut help up karenge aap bhi unki help kar sakte hain kisi na kisi tarike se main manta hu ki you can also add value to yes so primarily focus on adding value because as a lawyer you have two tasks all in all pehla to add value to the lives of people secondly to get things done this is all what you have to do as a lawyer to get things done and to add value to the lives of people your colleagues your friends your clients everyone so as long as you know how to get things done you are good in the field of law yes so dusra cheez ab we have अभी तो खत्म ही हो चुका है पॉडकास्ट तो बस ये खत्म यू नो बिफोर एंडिंग दिस वीडियो यू नो यू जस्ट आई वांट यू टू गिव सम एडवाइस जो आने वाले लॉ स्टूडेंट है जो फर्स्ट या सेकंड ईयर पे है कुछ एडवाइस जो बहुत वैल्यूएबल रहेंगे एडवाइस देखिए मैं आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन दिस एडवाइस बट आई विल रीटरेट इट वंस फोकस करो स्ट्रेटजी पे काम करो स्मार्ट वर्क और हार्ड वर्क में से हमेशा स्मार्ट वर्क पे वेल करता है हार्डवर्क भी जरूरी होता है कुछ पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम पे लेकिन स्मार्ट स्मार्ट वर्क इज ऑलवेज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट तो ट्राई टू डिसाइड व्हाट यू वांट टू परस्यू ट्राई टू आइडेंटिफाई योर एरिया ऑफ इंटरेस्ट वर्क इन लाइन विद दैट एरिया ऑफ इंटरेस्ट बाय डेवलपिंग अ स्ट्रेटजी वंस यू डेवलप दैट स्ट्रेटजी यू वर्क इन अ लाइन सी अगर आप यू हैव फोर रोड गोइंग इन द फोर डायरेक्शन तो आप एक स्टेप लेते हो नॉर्थ में एक स्टेप लेते हो साउथ में एक स्टेप लेते हो ईस्ट में एक स्टेप लेते हो वेस्ट में आपने चले तो चार स्टेप है लेकिन आप पहुंचे कहीं भी नहीं वही आप ईस्ट में चार स्टेप चलोगे या वेस्ट में चार स्टेप चलोगे तो यू लेट लीस्ट रीच टू अ पर्टिकुलर डेस्टिनेशन विद लीस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ एफर्ट तो एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम है क्लैरिटी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रीडिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डेवलप अबिट ऑफ रीडिंग go through the judgments updates uh, read live law bar and bench law trends every such thing possible yeah and knowledge is the key a doctor should know the medical an engineer should know maybe the uh, technical side and things but a lawyer should know everything everything from yes. politics to medical to uh, technical side of things because you never know when a medical negligence will come to your way yes a medical negligence case will come on your way or when a technical case you'll have to deal with or when your see there are everything see there's a particular thing us cheez se dispute arise hoga wo dispute aapke paas aayega aur wo jo cheeze hain wo bahut wide hai yeah to aapko har cheez ka basic knowledge at least hona chahiye you should know basics of everything okay um, so okay so we are you know like the end of video uh, thank you so much with us for joining in it was amazing uh, you know talk amazing to you know speak to you talking about you know, different uh, aspects or uh, you know and aspects of your life that you have had you know this past four years and how it was and how it, how it is now and how to build up connections and competitions and internship 
I know that this will definitely add a value to each person who will watch this podcast. And um, guys, uh, I also want to tell uh, his LinkedIn ID will be on the description. And never forget, never forget to watch his um, newsletter. Uh, study that it is amazing. I have you know read two to three. Whenever I get time, I, I and you know after seeing that newsletter, I was like, okay, we have many things to do. So thank you so yes. much uh, for joining in. It was really nice talking to you, Nitin. It was really uh, refreshing. It was really, it added a lot of value. Uh, looking forward to doing it again at some point of time. Yes. And wishing you all the success in your future endeavors as well as for this podcast. Looking forward to more such episodes. Thank you. Thank you.